Hello everyone! It's me again, Teacher John. This tutorial is for statistics and probability, a subject which is intended for grade 11 senior high school students in the Philippines. So for today's objectives, at the end of the lesson, the learners will be able to Formulates the appropriate now and alternative hypothesis on a population proportion. Identifies the appropriate form of the test statistic when the central limit theorem is to be used. Identifies the appropriate projection region for a given level of significance when the central limit theorem is to be used. Computes for the test statistic value of the population proportion and draws conclusion about the population proportion based on the test statistic value and the rejection region. For today's topic, it is still under hypothesis testing. We will have population proportion. So we have the z-test for proportion. So to compare sample proportion and population proportion, we use the z-test for one sample proportion. The test statistic for this test is, so we have this formula where p is the sample proportion equals x over n, where x is the number of success and n is the sample size. And then the P sub O is the population proportion. So for the formula, we have Z equals the P minus P sub O divided by the square root of P sub O times 1 minus P sub O divided by the sample size. So for the test statistic, so we have the same decision rule for critical value method. So since we are using z-test, which is for sample size greater than or equal to 30, and the variance is known or when CLT or central limit theorem is used. So same decision rule. So if our z-computed is greater than or equal to our critical value of z, we reject the null hypothesis. And if the computed z is less than the critical value of z, we do not reject our null hypothesis. So same thing, we take note that for negative sign of the computed z, it is uh, the sign is disregarded when comparing it to the critical value if the hypothesis is non-directional, which is two-tailed or one-tailed under left tailed. So again, we'll be using the same steps for hypothesis testing. So for the first step, we identify or we state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Then we specify the level of significance and the sample size. For the third step, we identify the test statistic. So for this one is the z-test for proportion. Then number four, we identify the critical region it for uh, to be used for our decision rule. And number five, we compute for the test statistic. And number six, we made the decision and the conclusion. So example number one, according to the NCR Department of Education, 25% of high school teachers had passed the English proficiency. What conclusion would you draw if 70 in a ran random sample of 250 teachers passed the recent English proficiency at 0 0.05 level of significance? So for step one, we state our null and alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis, we have proportion is 0 0.25 and alternative is proportion is not equal to 0 
Then step two, we identify the level of significance and the sample size. So first, we identify the value of the P, which is 70 out of 250, so we'll have 0 0.28. And our alpha, or level of significance, is 0 0.05. And our sample size equals 250. So for step 3, we have the test statistics. So we would only be using Z-test for proportion and from the problem that is detailed. Then we identify the critical region. So we have the alpha of 0 0.05 and then it's detailed. So our critical region is 1.96. So we would reject. The population proportion equals 0 0.25 if the calculated Z is greater than or equal to 1.96. So for step 5, we would be computing for the Z test. So again, since we're using two-tailed, so negative sign would be disregarded when comparing it to the critical value. Then we have the formula, and then we just substitute all the values from for it. So we have 0 0.28 minus 0 0.25 divided by the square root of 0 0.25 times 1 minus 0 0.25 all over 250 and that will give us 1.10. So we will be comparing 1.10 and our critical value or critical region to make our decision. So for the decision and conclusion, so we will not reject or do not reject the null hypothesis since the calculated Z, which is 1.10, is less than the critical value 1.96. So therefore, it is likely that the high school teachers that pass the English proficiency is 25%. So next example. So according to the NCR Department of Education, 25% of high school teachers had passed the English proficiency. So is there a sufficient evidence to support the claim that the 96 out of another randomized batch of 300 teachers performed better in the recent English proficiency? So again, for our step one, we state the null and alter alternative hypothesis. So for our null hypothesis, so population proportion equals 0 0.25 and our alternative hypothesis is population proportion is greater than 0 0.25. So it's greater than since we have a keyword there on the problem better. Next for step 2, we specify the level of significance and the sample size. So we can compute for our sample proportion. So we have 96 over 300. That will give us 0 0.32. And our alpha is 0 0.05. And our sample size equals 300. So where do we get our alpha? So since this problem is related from our problem number one. So we are using the same alpha or level of significance. So for the third step, so we have the test statistic. So we'll be using z-test for proportion, one tail, right tail. So for step four, we have the critical region. So for alpha 0.05 or significance level 0.05 under one tail, so the critical region or critical value is 1.645. So we will reject the population proportion equals 0.25 if the calculated Z is greater than or equal to 1.645. Then step 5 is the computation, so we will still be using the same formula. And then we substitute the values, so we have 0 0.32 minus 0 
divided by the square root of 0 0.25 times 1 minus 0 0.25 over 300. So we have 2.8. So this 2.8 will be compared to our vertical value 1.645 for us to have our decision or conclusion. So for our decision and conclusion, we would reject null, the null hypothesis since the calculated z, which is 2.8, is greater than the critical value 1.645. So therefore, there is no sufficient evidence that the other randomized batch of teachers performed better in the recent English proficiency. So a doctor claims that only 10% of all patients exposed to an asymptomatic COVID patient will feel ill effects. If a random sample, 5 out of 18 patients exposed to such patient, feel some ill effects, test the doctor's claim at 0 0.01 level of significance. So first step again, we have to state our null and alternative hypothesis. So the population proportion for our null hypothesis equals 0 0.10 and for our alternative, so we have population proportion is not equal to 0 0.10. For step 2, we specify the level of significance and the sample size. So we have the sample proportion 5 out of 18, so that would be 0 0.28. Our alpha is 0 0.01, our significance level is 0 0.01, and our sample size is 18. So for step 3, the test statistics, so we will still be using z-test for proportion. And we have two tailed tests. So next step four is the critical region. So we have our significance level or alpha at 0 0.01 and under two tailed, so the critical value is 2.576. So we would reject the null hypothesis. So population proportion equals 0 0.10 if the calculated z is greater than or equal to 2.576. So for step 5 is our computation. So since we're using two-tailed, we would be disregarding the negative sign when comparing it to the critical value. So same formula, then we just substitute the values. So we have 0 0.28 minus 0 0.10 divided by the square root of 0 0.10 times 1 minus 0 0.10 over 18. And that will give us 2.55. So for our decision and conclusion, so we will be comparing the 2.55 to our critical value 2.576. So our decision would be do not reject the null hypothesis since the calculated z, which is 2.55, is less than the critical value 2.576. So therefore, the claim of the doctor that the patients feel some ill effect is correct. So we're done for today. And thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot and see you in our next lesson. Bye!